Hello, and welcome to Time Between Time Stories once more. It's that time of the week again, when we leave behind our worries and woes, and sit together and enjoy a tale traditionally told. It's that time when we sit around the fireplace, more and more of us each week, sit back, relax. It's a time when the veil between our world and the fairy world grows wafer thin, so thin that just for a moment you can reach out into their world and they can reach into ours. Now is the time between times. So forget about your worries, your woes and what's going on in the world. Join me here for a story at this time. Are you ready? Sit back, relax, clear your mind and join me here at the time when it is neither night nor day, but the sun has gone and the sky is grey. For the tale of the swallowed court. Not far from where I sit right now, there is a place called Kenfig by the sea. It is barren and bleak, but has a sudden beauty that can come upon you as you reach over the dunes and see it in the distance. Kenfig is a wild, wicked place. And in the middle is a great lake or pool known, funnily enough, as Kenfig Pool. When the waters grow low and the wind grows high, it is said that you can hear the church bells ringing in Kenfig Pool. When the water grows so low, it is said that you can see the steeple of the church above the waters. But how is this so? Well, it goes back many years when a prince called Bentley was Prince of Kenfig, lived there. He was a cruel, cruel man. He would hunt every week. He would treat his friends badly. He would fish every week. He would hunt every week. He would make war with neighbouring tribes. And he was cruel to his people. He had a wife who was older than he and had grown much old. And he did not treat her well. Once when he was out hunting in the woods nearby, near Margam, where the trees rose high and reached the sky, he was there with his bow, hunting the deer, when he heard somebody running through the forest towards him. All his men were hiding, ready to catch the deer, but out from the forest was not a deer or a stag, but a beautiful maiden aboard a white horse. She rode past him. He rushed to try and speak to her, calling out, but she rode away without a word. As the week passed, he could think of nothing but this woman. The next week, he went back to the same place, ready with his bow to catch a stag. When again, the sound of a horse came in through the woods nearby, rushed past him. And this time he called out, stop, please, for I am your prince. But she did not, and carried on riding. The third time, the same thing happened. But this time, Bentley stepped in front of the horse, causing it to stop. And a beautiful maiden with flowers in her hair stepped off the horse, stood in front of him, causing his heart to beat faster and faster until he felt it was burst from his chest. What is it you require of me? she said. I have never seen anything so beautiful or fair. I wish you to be my bride. Please be my bride. But you are Bentley and you are already married. I will not be your bride while you have another wife. I will... My wife will be gone if you will be my wife. I will have you all to myself. You will have a kingdom to look after. You will be the princess of Kenfig. How does that sound? That sounds fine indeed, said the fair maid. But know this. There are some conditions by which we live. Every eighth day you will leave me unfollowed when I go back and visit my fairy folk, my folk of the Tulwith Tig. You will not know what I do there, nor will you care. Yes, of course, although Bentley was now frightened, for little did he realise that this fair maiden was one of the Tulwith Tig. You may go every eighth day, and I will not follow you. That is true. With that, he headed back to Kenfi and rode through the streets in triumph, bringing with him his new bride. Cruelly, he had his old wife taken away, and he went to live in the monastery not far. 
he married the fairy maid and they were very, very happy. The prince and his fairy bride. And just as she said, every eighth day, she would leave his bed at the time between times when the time when it was neither night nor day, but the sun had gone and the sky is grey. She would get out of bed just as the sun was coming up and ride off into the forest, returning at the time between times that evening. Bentley, this started to play on his mind. For the first few years he let it go because his wife was so fair and in his mind grew more beautiful ever every day. She did not age one day. But after nine years it drove him insane that on every eighth night he tossed and turned in his empty bed waiting for his wife to return knowing not where she went. He summoned Wylan, a clerk in Kemphig, who was known to be fluent in the old ancient languages of spells and magic. And he said, Wylan, I cannot cope with it any more. Where does my bride go every eighth night? Find her for me. If there is another prince or another man that she sees, I want him killed. She is mine and mine alone. Do you understand? Yes, my lord, I understand said Wylan, and he waited and he watched, and on the eighth night he hid in the forest nearby, knowing the path which the bride would take, and right, just as he thought, Bentley's bride rode past him, deep into the forest of Margam, through the winding woods she went, and he ran after as fast as his feet would carry him, until she came to a cave in the mountainside. And there she disappeared, leaving her horse tethered outside. Wylan ran up and listened at the cave. Far deep within the mountain, he could hear music and laughter as the fairy folk danced and played deep beneath the earth. Now he knew where she went. It seems that she goes back to her own folk. So what I will do, I will cast a spell to seal her within. Until she gives up this one night in eight, she will not return to Kemphig any more. <laughs> he put his hand on the cold stone of the wall of the caves and started to twirl it round and round and round, muttering under his breath a language unheard in these lands for thousands of years. As he started to do this, the rain started to fall. Small little drips and drabs going louder and louder until it beat on the trees like thunder. And then the thunder started. But still Wylan carried on with the spell until at last, at midnight, a great storm arrived that thundered and roared through the valleys. And still, all day, he had carried on with the spell. And he could see now that the lights of the fairy folk were trying to leave the cave, but they would not, and he would not allow it, until at finally his spell was stopped. And with a bang, the portal to the fairy world was sealed. The rain was raining so heavily now that he could see the rivers burst in their banks. And only up here, high in the mountains, did he know he was safe. <laughs> but then, coming from the cave, came an old, haggard ogress. Her back was bent, her hands were hooked, and she spoke in a voice as old as the mountains and as capricious as the sea. Wylan was horrified, stepped back. I am the bride of Bentley. This is my true form. Every eighth night I come here and my beauty is reborn as we dance beneath the mountain. Bentley promised that he would allow this, but now he has broken that promise. And although my beauty is faded, in this form I am happiest. I said to him, that I would be his bride. I would be his bride until the green rushes grew in his hall. And as you have been here, Wylan, the sea has broken over the walls that held it back and pulled
poured into the streets and towns and houses of Kenfig. And it is no more. And it will forever be no more. With that, she blew Wylan a kiss, smiled, and disappeared into the cave. Wylan ran back until he overlooked Kemfig, his house, the hall of Bentley the Prince, and the old church, and all the other houses had been covered by the sea. And that is how it remains to this day, lost beneath the ocean, the coast of South Wales. But as I said, if you listen ever so closely, you will hear the bells ringing when the water is low. And the princess of the swallowed court cast her curse upon it, for Ben Lee did not abide by the rules of the Tulwyd Tag. And that, my friends, is another tale. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you ever so much for joining me every week, as you do. Please like, subscribe, and please tell me what you think. Your comments are so nice, so beautiful, and make my day. Diolch Please stay safe out there. Stay true to yourself. Be nice. Be kind and join me again at the time between times. Nostar. No